The first thing you're probably wondering is how much has Blake Shelton changed physically since starting The Voice in 2011. So, side by side, it's a photo from Blake in 2011, next to one from today, not too different, right? Wait, oh, hold on one second here, let's zoom out these pictures, oh, yep, things have changed a little bit, but trust me, that's just the start of it. I'm Billy Dukes, and I promise we're not going to get all tabloidy during this episode of The Secret History of Country Music. This episode is more about how the guy who sang this... Now Red got real used to seeing his lady every night. ...became this... For the ups and, downs. ...and then this... When you start rapping, I mean, rapping is my thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And your rapping was dope. If you're all in on Team Blake... You're going to want to subscribe because we're first with news and perspective from his career and his time on NBC's hit show. Like that time Team Blake member Cassidy Pope watched back her winning moment and freaked out just a little bit. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my god. Oh, my family's crying. Yeah, we'll link to her in the corner and the description section. Blake Shelton has been a part of every season of The Voice, starting in 2011 when he teamed up with Adam Levine, CeeLo Green, and Christina Aguilera to bring a show that promised to be positive at a time when other reality shows <coughs> idol, were being kind of mean. But how did Blake get this gig? That goes back four years prior to his guest judge slot on Nashville Star, the OG nice guy singing reality show, and then Clash of the Choirs on NBC. What? You don't remember Clash of the Choirs? There were only four episodes that found Blake taking a choir from Ada, Oklahoma, against choirs led by people like Nick Lachey and Patti LaBelle. Kind of weird, and Blake wasn't even that much of a star. He was energetic, but he was omitted from the show promo, and there weren't any of his, you know, antics. In fact, his on-camera sessions were a bit, uh, raw. <laughs> I'm Blake Shelton, and I'm representing the state of Oklahoma. I want to win this thing. I want to bring the money home. Now we got it. Now we got it. Now we got it. But it was good enough. On April 26th, 2011, The Voice went live. Soon after, Blake did this for the first time, and by season two, he started to win big, big. That pointing picture is actually a pretty good way to judge how he's aged on the show. Enjoy this uh, time-lapse moment of Blake pointing at himself while I take a quick sip of water. I'm getting a little parched. So he's a little bit more gray and better dressed now. Blazers didn't prove to be quite as timeless as we all thought back then. Maybe he's added 10 pounds, but that's not too bad in 10 years. The most significant ways Blake has changed comes in how he handles his non-voice time. Here's the biggest three. First, Blake spends way more time on TV than he does on stage these days. It was almost a year before she called him up. Initially, he tried to do it all. In 2011, he had his own winter and spring tour before he hooked up with Brad Paisley's tour. The last few non-COVID years, he pretty much snuck in around 20 shows in Q1 and called it a year. He doesn't make as many albums either. Shelton dropped albums each of the first four years on The Voice, but then slowed to an album in 2016, one in 2017, and then actually we're still waiting for his next full-length album of new material, and we might keep waiting. He says he's off that drug and instead is just going to keep releasing singles like this one. Got a deed to the land, but it ain't my ground. This is God's country. The other big professional change in Blake's life is another place we don't see him. In 2011, he hosted an awards show for the first time when he joined Reba for the ACMs. Can we talk about what a great two months he had back then? Hit songs, married a hot wife, hosted the ACMs, started The Voice, and then in July, he released what is arguably his greatest album, Red River Blue. Dude was smoking. Now he doesn't really host anything, which is kind of a bummer because he was awesome, but it might have to do with his NBC contract. You see the ACMs and the CMAs are on CBS and ABC, respectively. That's just a lot of letters. So, moving on, some ways Blake hasn't changed. He still keeps in country with some old friends like racer Elliot Sadler and country singer Craig Morgan. He's still hotter than a $2 pistol soaked in Frank's Red Hot on Twitter. Oddly, he's poised to be married again, just like he was when he started The Voice. Blake and Miranda Lambert married in May 2011 and split four years later. But like I said, we're not going to get into all that tabloid stuff.
Blake and Gwen Stefani are likely to be married in 2021 or 2022. Back then, it wasn't clear if 34-year-old Blake wanted kids, but now we see him mugging with Gwen's kids all the time. So that's a pretty big change. Oh, and he lives in Los Angeles now, at least part-time. Here are some renderings of his house there, although he still does have that ranch in Ada, Oklahoma. But if I had told you in 2010 that Blake Shelton would be going to Hollywood, would you have believed it? Then again, if I had told you that he was besties with the dude from Maroon 5, and he was intimate with the singer from No Doubt, yeah, that kind of would have been a stretch too. Y'all don't leave yet. Here is a link to even more secret history of country music videos, including more on Blake's Wild Ride, and then a link to our latest breaking news video. And for the love of all things sacred, subscribe to this channel for more of the same. Don't make me beg.